So in this video, I'll be using the method of maximum likelihood to approximate the uh, variance for the normal distribution. Uh, now to do this, let's suppose that we have uh, a sample x1, x2, we'll go to xn uh, from the normal distribution. Uh, we are also going to assume that these uh, values are independent and identically distributed. The IID assumption uh, is an important assumption and we're going to be using that fact, that assumption, throughout our derivation. Uh, the probability density function for the normal distribution is as follows. So f of x as a function of mu and sigma squared equals 1 over 2 pi sigma squared uh, multiplied by exponential of minus x mu to the power 2 divided by 2 sigma squared. Now the likelihood function, the likelihood of the parameters as a function of uh, our data is just the joint probability of our data. So in this case, probability of x1 equivalent to x1 all the way to xn equivalent xn. Now as we assumed that the uh, values are independent, we can I just write this joint li uh, joint probability function uh, as a product of the individual probability functions. So this is this would be equal to probability of x1 equivalent to x1 times the probability of x2 equivalent x2 all the way to the probability of xn equivalent xn. So if you remember. Uh, the probability of A given B equals the probability of A and B over the probability of B. Now, if A is independent of B, then the probability of A given B simply equals to the probability of A, which basically means that uh, given that B has occurred, the probability of A is unaffected. So in this case, we're just substituting probability of A uh, with probability of A given B equals probability of A and B over probability of B. And by simply rearranging, we get that the probability of A and B is just a product of probability of A and probability of B. So that's what we're doing uh, here. And as we're assuming that the random variables uh, come from the same uh, distribution, um, so the identically distributed part of our assumption, uh, because of that, we can actually rewrite this as probability of x equaling x1 times the probability of x equaling xn. Uh, we can actually use a shorthand notation uh, for this. So this is uh, the product symbol, which basically means uh, the line above. And so this line and the line above are identical. So now we're just going to substitute in the probability density function. So the likelihood function is the product of the probability density function uh, for each value. And we're going to use a subscript here. Which is equal to
So this is the first value. So this is the uh, density function for the first value. Uh, we're going to multiply this by the density of the second value. All the way up to the density of the last uh, observation. You should know that uh, x to the power a uh, multiplied x to the power b is equal to x to the power a plus b. So similarly here, our base is 2 pi sigma squared and the power is minus a half and we have n of those so we have 2 to the power sigma squared minus n over 2. Uh, similarly here you should know that e to the a times e to the b equals e to the a plus b. Uh, so uh, this is simply equal to uh, 1 minus 1 over 2 sigma squared uh, and we're going to need a, a sum here from 1 to n uh, of xi just like that. So this is our likelihood function and it's a function of mu and uh, sigma squared uh, both of which we don't know. Now we usually like to work with the log likelihood. So what I'm going to do now is take the log of the likelihood function. So we have, so here I'm going to use the vector form. Uh, this vector basically represents our data. And if we take the log, we'll have And if we take the log of the exponential, that just cancels out. So we'll just have the power So now, um, as it's going to be difficult to work with sigma squared, let's just let uh, sigma squared equal to theta. So now I'm just going to rewrite the uh, log a likelihood function. I'm also going to uh, separate this. And I'm going to rewrite this in the form in this form. obviously the sum is a sum from i equaling 1 to n. So now we have our log likelihood function and usually we'll, we would have a, uh, a function like this, a, a quadratic, an upside down quadratic. So um, in order to work out the maximum likelihood, we want to maximize this function. And to do this, we'll, we will differentiate the log likelihood function first. Uh, with respect to theta, so our first term is not a function of theta, so we can ignore this. However, the second term does entail theta, so we'll need to differentiate this. So its differential is n over 2 times theta. And the differential of this term, of the third term, would be min uh, plus a half theta minus 2. 
and the sum from 1 to n of xi. And in order to maximize the function, we have the letter equal to 0. Uh, so let's equal that to 0. And what we need to do now is solve this. So to solve this, we need to multiply the numerator of the first term by theta. So we have minus n theta over 2 theta squared plus 1 over 2 theta squared. And that one, we have the sum. Uh, and th this is equal to 0. Now, if we multiply both sides of the equation by 2 theta squared, we would have, we will have minus n theta plus the sum from 1 to n of xi subtract mu all squared equals to 0. Now, uh, all we have to do is just take the uh, minus n theta to the other side and we will have n theta equals to the sum from 1 to n of xi subtract mu squared and now uh, we have our approximated theta which is 1 over n the sum from 1 to n of xi subtract mu all squared and since we don't know mu, we're going to have to use uh, the approximated value uh, for mu. So mu equals x bar. And so in order, to, in order to account for this, we're going to have to divide uh, this, this by 1 over n minus 1. And so the population variance is approximated by the sample variance in this case.